Okay. I'm glad to see, to see so many here. Um, so it's, 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 it's always a pleasant experience to come back to, to Krakow. I've been, I've, I've been here a few times actually. I don't know when Conrad started inviting me for, for, for GCON. It was a few... 2009. 2009, yeah, yeah. And before that I think I visited a few, a few, a few meetups, Java meetups back then. Uh, this talk, it's, uh, it's, it's quite an epic long talk. So I, I will actually try to sort of hide a few slides and, and, and focus on the essence, but it's still, it might be too long. So I might have to like skip a little bit in the, in the, in the middle or, 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 yeah, uh, or in the end. But uh, the essence of this, of this talk is sort of, is sort of walk through of a, of, a, of a passion of mine, like di distributed systems. So it's essentially for like talk about the fundamentals in distributed systems, some of the history leading all the way up to the state of the art in, di in distributed systems today, and and, and in the in the in the end, I mean, explaining how how Aka cluster is all working and how how we're sort of based it up, how we like standing on the shoulders of giants to use like a worn out expression. Really, how we how we actually. Have, have, have accomplished what we have by, by relying on I mean, thorough research and like the hard work of people from like from the 70s or 60s or even even older. Uh, but mixing in some of the very interesting like new research that, that, that is happening in this in this area. I mean I, I think most people are aware that the distributed systems are back. They're here to stay, they're exciting and, and, and it's really been sort of a new revival for distributed systems the last, the last 10, 10 years or even more like the last five years. I think, so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on right now and that's why I think it's very exciting to be part of this community and, 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 like, and, and actually be part of, 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 of ACA. Conrad can nowadays tell you a lot more about ACA than, than I can even though I started it. But, uh, so I'll leave, I'll leave most of that to him, I think. But I'm going to sort of focus on the, ba on the, on the, on the basics. So it's going, it's going to be a bit, bit theor theoretical. If you're, if you're not that kind of guy, I will, I will not be offended if you, if you, if you leave or, you, or, like, or pass out halfway through. But uh, I think it's something that everyone should know <laughs> and everyone should actually be interested and passionate about because it's, as I said, distributed systems is the way, it's here to stay and it's, and I think we need to go back in history and learn from the, from the masters and, and learn the basics and actually to be able to tackle the challenges so that we all face today. So I'm going to start with what is a distributed system really and uh, why would you need one? So I, I really think that, as I said in, in, in the in sort of intro, the distributed computing is it's back. It's the, it's the new normal. Or back. I mean, it's really never been as exciting as to, as today. As I, I think, but it's really here to stay permanently. It's really the new, the, the new, the new normal. It's, there's, you can't like hand wave it any longer, or say that it's yeah, it's only for these really large scale applications. I mean, even if you write smaller size applications today, you use normally, at least, at least you, unless you like create pacemakers or, or stuff like that. You actually, you you have a distributed system somewhere in your infrastructure. And uh, I think we did, by accepting that and embracing that, I think we don't have to fight it any longer. I mean, most people have, I mean, most apps today are written like somehow with a mixture like of having mobile clients that are disconnected, they can go offline and come back, right? And they need to merge the state back and make sure that everything syncs, okay? That's like, funded, brings right in there, like all the fundamental problems of distributed systems. How, do, how, we, how, how can we make it all work? Most, most NoSQL databases use some, have some sort of REST API that you talk to. I mean, you have a network there, you have a distributed system. Most of them actually have some sort of replication that you, that you like to, to make sure that you have avail availability. So there, so there you also have a, dis, a dis, distributed system and, and so on. So I can, I, can, I can go on, but I think you, you, you get the picture here. So what is the essence then of distributed systems? What is like the categorizing traits? Uh, it's been said that it's to overcome two things, right? That the information travels at the speed of light. Information has latency. You have a, like an upper limit of how fast the information can travel. And on a single machine, it's, it's like unnoticeable because things like move so quickly within, within a single CPU. But if you have multi-core multi architectures, you start to see the effect if you have multi-node multi, multi systems. 
it's definitely there. You will, you will like be able to, to actually feel the latency. Uh, even if it happens like close to the speed of light, which it, which it normally doesn't because, um, because there are a lot of limits like routers and, 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 and of course, I mean, not, not, not everyone has fiber and so on, but, but theoretically, I think we can perhaps get, come close to, I don't, I don't know, 70% of, 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 the, of, of the speed of light, but still it's noticeable. And the, and the second big thing that most people don't think about when they come in like in this new world is like that independent things fail independently. You have things like partial failures, you have things like that completely blow up in the, and, and, and you don't detect that un, until like minutes, sometimes uh, days later, and you have no clue what went, what went wrong. So, and so, and why, why would we need it then? Why, why, why sort of bring in all this, this like, com why like dive into this complicated world, essentially? For, for two things, I think. That's for elasticity. When we sort of outgrow the resources or we have on a single node, we just need more computing power to deal with the, with the, with the sort of the load that the application has or the, the SLAs, like to, to meet the SLAs. And for availability. When, 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 sort of when providing resilience on one node is not enough, right? You need at least two or three or five or 100 or like new data centers if, 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 like there's, if there's a power outage in one of them and so on. I mean, two new globes, right? If it's a nuclear war. I mean, it sort of never stops, right? And, and the, the third thing that I sort of added on the side here, but I think it applies, is rich stateful clients. As soon as you have stateful clients that, that can disconnect and are allowed to come back, you have a lot of hard problems that you need to solve. A lot of interesting research is going on there right now. I'm going to talk about some of that later, how we can actually address that. So what is the, what is the problem? It's, it's, that is so freaking hard. It's still very hard, even though, even though we've been doing distributed systems for years now, nowadays. And uh, one of the sort of fundamental problems why it's so hard is that the, you have a network between uh, the, the two parties that are communicating. And the network is inherently unreliable. Things, th things fail. I mean, they can be like network, like temporary network drops, like socket I mean, disconnects and reconnects. Messages are dropped. They are reordered. And they also are sent more than once. And, and in like dealing with all these things, like when there's a lot of like moving parts, like where, where some of them are always down. In a, in a, in a fairly large, complex system, there's always one component that is failing constantly. How do, you, how do you cope with that? I mean, most like, actually successful systems actually operate at a degraded so capacity due to failure, but they still are up and, there are, and, they, and we don't, as users, don't even notice that. Why? Because they've sort of applied good principles to deal with the problem that the network is, is unreliable. And this means that you can't tell the difference. Like as one, one, one telling example is really that you can't tell the difference between what is a slow node or a slow communication partner or, or like peer or when he's down, when he's dead and it will never ever come back, come, come, back, come back again. There's just no way of knowing. This actually can be proved to be impossible to know. So we need to make, be good at making guesses and take educated guesses based on experience and based on, on, on usage patterns and so on to be able to detect when someone is actually really host and when someone's just having a hard time doing GC, for example, or, 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 or whatever, being down for, for like, like temporary reasons. Uh, uh, you, you probably heard about Peter Deutsch's eight fallacies of distributed computing. I, I, don't, I, I won't go into every de detail of every one of them, but I think they are worth listing here at least. The top one is that network is, is reliable, meaning that is unreliable. These are the fallacies, right? Uh, let the latency is zero. We, we already talk, talked about these two things. Uh, that's sort of my, my, I think the, the two main issues that is driving the complexity, but also what makes it fun, right? <laughs> in distributed systems. Band this is infinite, the, net, the network is secure, the topology doesn't change. There's one administrator. I mean, the, oh, I mean as, soon, as, soon, as soon as you put a human in, in front, of, front of the, you know, the steering wheel, weird things happen, right? Uh, the, the transport cost is zero. The network is homogeneous. I think we all, I mean, should like really engrave these on the wall and, and sort of internalize them. 
So yes, it's really still really really hard, and th th this is why why I where I really, I've been sort of through this and, and, and see the pain and 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 and, and I I've, I've, I have my own graveyard of distributed systems that I like visit sometimes for for comfort uh, to, 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 as a sort of, to to like when things are hard to see that we actually made some progress we actually have these past us now at least at least in most most uh, most people. The gig, I mean, the, my top one there is guaranteed delivery. There's really no such the, no such thing. Even though it's like the the way sort of the way people talk about a start like creep in now when we talk about stream processing like once and only once, you know, exactly once and so on. This, I don't. I, I I can go on the record and say there's really no such thing. You you can sort of hand wave it and say yes, well it's exactly once within these constraints, whatever. But there's no, really no such thing. Synchronous RPCs actually were, were most of the pains were, were in like the, the, say the early 90s, like Corba and you know, EGBs and all these things, right? They're pretending that the network isn't there and then sort of faking it, right? And hope that no one will notice, all right? Hopefully, like, we will just hit the happy path. No, that's not, not going to happen. When, when things fail, then they fail in just the most spectacular ways because because you have like limited this, the, the abstraction to a way that you can't even notice and deal with it, right? You just die, okay. It was, I mean, I was happy until it, as long as it lasted. The, the distributed RPX and the distributed shared mutable state and, and, and XA transactions, and so I can, can go on all day about this, but I won't. Uh, but some general strategies in how, how to avoid all of these things instead. It's like to, yeah, to, to l learn from the, from 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 Caesar, I think we should we should, we should divide and c conquer, decompose the system as as much as possible into small incremental parts. We can like partition for scale and and replicate that for resilience. And and uh, some other sort of general strategies I think are important are, 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 are for example relying on share nothing designs like like sort of the mantra we've been like trying to make people understand when when when, when building ACA, like actor based systems. <laughs> It's a lot to gain from, 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 a, from a share nothing uh, design pers perspective, for, both for failure, like isolation, to not to, you don't have cascading failures, but also for efficiency reasons, to make sure that, that, that there's no contention in your system. So you can actually use state without having to share it, and mean that you can use it completely free of locks and free of contention and coordination, which is, which is very nice. And asynchronous message passing is, of course, the best tool. That's how the network is operating. Exposing that all the way up to the user actually makes it harder because it speaks the truth. And that's very important. I mean, by sort of embracing the, the constraints and embracing the facts, uh, I mean, embracing the way the world actually works, I think, opens up for simplifications. Um, and I can go on all day about this. I mean, I've been giving whole talks on this, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with, with all the details here. But I think that also location transparency is also something that I think is high, highly under, uh, undervalued. Being able to, 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 to have the references to instances running somewhere without having to know, like decoupling them in both time, as you do with concurrency and space. It opens up for them for the runtime to actually have the freedom to move this around, optimize the, uh, the, sort of the, the application in, in, in the best way. Uh, but now, sort of, let's dive down into the fundamentals, right? Theoretical models. And uh, I, I think, first, I mean, the model for distributed computing should allow three things. It should allow concurrency, I mean, decoupling in time. It should allow distribution, meaning decoupling in space. Those are the, 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 the key thing. And also mobility. I think not just decoupling a space, but allowing the components to actually move around and, and disconnect and come back and so on. And so this is like so the, 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 the top three. And not everyone, not all systems need all of these, right? but, but I think uh, it's a good sort of, um, uh, so, really something that we should, we should strive for. So, so now sort of let's go through some of the, sort of the fundamental models and see how they are. So, suited for distributed systems. I don't know if you recognize this guy, Alonso Church. He invented the lambda calculus in the, th in the 30s. And, and I, I think lambda calculus is, an, is, is a beautiful model. We still use it today, and it has had this sort of re revival now through functional programming. It's, 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 it's great. And, it's, and if, you, if you look at it from a state perspective, 
State is very important, and of course, when it comes to concurrency, di distribution, and everything. So I'm going I'm to look at everything from the from the perspective of state and what I call order, meaning sort of behavior. So, but, 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 but starting with state, state is immutable, which means that actually, actually there's stable values that you could, that you could, that you can trust. It's managed through like functional application, and the and the order, the evaluation order, you should go be beta re reduction. And the interesting thing is that it can be 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 performed in any in any, in any order, even even in parallel. But but so I think it's lambda calculus have proven. I mean. In this revival, a lot of people say, yeah, it's great because it, 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 and you can use, use it for, for concurrency. It's a perfect model for concurrency. And I really think it supports concurrency very, very well. But it's a really bad model for, di for, di 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 for distribution, and it, and it does not support mobility either. But it's a good foundation to build other things on top, and that's what we see happening today. Who's this guy? It's not Turing, actually, uh, but it's from the same era. It's, it's, from, it's John von Neumann. And, and he created this von Neumann uh, machine in the in the in the 40s, and, and the, the the von the von Neumann machine is really sort of what lays the ground for for most of the sort of imperative systems we have today. Uh, state is like is mutable state in place updates. I mean meaning destructive updates, variables, and they can like reassign. Okay. Order, it actually gets, it gets by by using mutable state just because it has total ordering. Okay. You have, you have, you're working on, on this array, array of memory, like a word at a time, like working over this memory, and it's only you. You have the stable view of the system. No one else can come and interfere. So mutable state is okay. The problem is when you put this, this, sort of this model, uh, the pure version of it, Route out, out to run in a concurrent environment. It just completely falls flat. You need to start introducing locks, guard yourself, have high level abstractions to, to deal with that, these things under the hood. I mean, the, the mutability in a concurrent environment under the hood. It's really bad for distribution, it's also no model for, mo for mobility. Uh, which I think why we have such a hard time actually basing. I mean, these, I mean, writing distributed systems using Java or C or C++ and so on, because we need to layer so much junk on top because the our fundamental model don't support it. Okay, who's this? Jim Gray. Jim Gray has reinvented the transaction concept in in, 80, in, in, a, in the in the eighties. And he actually, he gave us sort of an escape route. We're, we're like with the, von, von, the von Neumann model actually lasted a bit, a bit, a bit longer because he il allowed us to like isolate the updates and have you know to have something called atom at atomicity and isolation. You know the A and I and acid. And uh, so he, it gave us this sort of disorder cross transaction, but the illusion of, of ordering of a pure single threaded von Neumann machine within each transaction. So it gave us like back this like beautiful world where we can use mutable state and everything's fine. The, pro the problem, or actually first, I mean, concurrency actually works quite well because you have this isolation, but distribution just doesn't work well. I don't know how many have used X8 transactions and like when things start to fail and uh, I don't know, you've, you've perhaps been spoiled, <laughs> but, but really, it, it's really a terrible, terrible things to put yourself through. Uh, so who's this guy? He's actually, he's still alive. Jim Gray should have been alive if he wasn't lost at sea. Like only, this was a tragedy just a few years ago. This is uh, Carl Hewitt. And he invented the actor model in the 70s. And the actor model is interesting for, for a lot of reasons. It's, it, it, it is what we're basing Akka on top of. It's actor model. It was early, it's one of the fundamental that Erlang is based upon, for example. And it has a very different way of looking at the world. So you, it's sort of, you, you can say that it's sort of built on top of lambda calculus with immu immu Im immutable values, but it has like see these safe islands, like these processes where, where, where you can like freely update state in immutable fashion, but you have complete share nothing between these. So you have like full atomicity within the actor, but sort of, sort of, and full predictability. Like the actor can be deterministic within each one, but you have like to, to, to total non-determinism outside, like anything can happen. Uh, which is which is which actually gives you a lot of power, and, and, it, and the, the interesting thing is that communication is totally based on based on message on message passing from uh, like as 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 part of the core of, of the core model. It's not something we laid on top. 
as an, as an extra feature, you can use whatever. It's like inherent in, inherent in, the, in, the, in the model. So you, so you have this, so you have like isolation and asynchronous message passing, the decoupling I talked about. And it really sets the stage for a great model for distributed systems. So I think it's a great model for, 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 for concurrency. I think it's also a great model for, di, for, di, di, for distribution. And honestly, I think that concurrency, even though I say there are two different things, they are essentially the same thing, actually. Concurrency is, can be like folded into distribution because e either, at least a concurrency in the, in the sort of name of, par of being able to parallelize things. Because parallelize something on, 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 on one machine it's just distribution within that machine, running it on multiple cores, running it on multiple sockets, the same thing as you do with, if you run it like, on multiple nodes. It's really this, 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 the same thing. So the thing we're after today, I think, is not concurrency. And that's what I think, for example, no, the node model. Like, well, I'm not going to bash node. There are a lot of, but this, this callback style model is actually have a lot of limitations because it, you don't, it only gives you the concurrency. It doesn't give you distribution. So you can't naturally take the model and like, like sort of make, it, make the abstraction work in the, in the larger context. It will just, just work on a single thread, which is nice, I'm just saying that. But I think actually the, the world today, the reality, and we're in uh, screams for a model that we, can, that we can sort of scale up the abstractions. I'm talking a lot here. <laughs> I don't know, I hope, I hope, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> that, that's why I'm here, I guess. I'm just hoping that you're following, you know. So, 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 so that's sort of the fundamental models, I think. There are, there are other ones, like Pi Calculus, and there are like some weird ones called a, a, Ambient ca, ca, Calculus, and, and other ones. But I think these are the fundamental models that I think we, we see today and that we work with almost every day. At least people use, I mean, usually Lambda Calculus and the phenomenon or sort of the, the inherent things from the phenomenon architecture or, and transactions. What, what some people might be new to is, is, the, is the actor model. But, I, but personally, I think that is, that is the, that's the best approach we have today. Impossibility theorems, those are interesting because they sort of shows what's not possible. Not just like what is possible, but it's actually the negation of what is not possible. And by doing that, it can give you like a glimpse of actually what is what is possible. And there are some 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 real some fundamental ones that I think most people uh, we at least should be aware of. The, the one one of the classic ones from '85 called the F FLP paper it stands for the for the first for the last names of the author like Fisher Lynch Patterson. I don't know if you heard of Na Nancy Lynch. She wrote, she wrote the. My, my textbook in school for, di for distributed systems. But it actually st states that consensus, we all know what, what, what consensus is, right? Agreement. It's actually, not, it's actually not, not, not possible. It's impossible in a distributed system with at least one faulty process, which, I mean, it's, it's a fact, will happen as soon as you have a network, as soon as you have real life, to reach, consen reach uh, consensus. And this has huge implications, and this, are, this means this is sort of the reason why distributed systems is so, it's, so, it's really so hard. Uh, the, the Henry Robinson in, in the paper trail is a great blog post. He said that yeah, the FLP result shows that in an, in an asynchronous setting where, there's, where, there, where, where one processor might crash, there is no distributed algorithm that solves the, the consensus problem. As I said, this has huge implications. There, there are, there are ways of, of designing systems that sort of work in the, real, in the real world, but there will always be edge cases where they don't, and that's why we need to deal with failure and deal with it. It's really, I mean, it's, it's really impossible to design a system that, that will always work. The, one, one of the other impossibility theorems is the CAP theorem. Um, most people have probably heard, heard about that. So, like, you know, yeah, there's a lot of discussions about that in the NoSQL space and, like, and so on. And that, that, that proves that lin linearizability is impossible, and linearizability is, is really like about above consistency. Consistency is, 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 is impossible. And, and it's impossible when you have the network. As soon as you have the network, then you have what is called P. C CAP actually stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Partition tolerance just says you run something on the network. 
there is, there is a chance for partitions. The network can go down. As soon as you run something on the network, you can only choose either C or, C or A. You can either choose to be fully, fully uh, consistent, but you sacrifice availability, or you can choose to be fully available, but then you can't be consistent, which, which is actually, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, hard truth, right? It's, 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 um, it's, it makes things quite, co quite complicated. And, and, and there are, I mean, it it's essentially gives you this whole gray zone I mean, when, when, is, when, is, when, when am I available enough to, to, get, to be consistent enough, right? There's nothing black and white. You don't need to be 100% consistent at all times, sacrificing availability at all times, and, or vice versa. You press don't need to be 100% available at all times, throwing like always consistency out the window. So the, it is this opens up for this whole gray zone of guarantees. And it's a lot like puts it like, sort of in your, in, in your hands. You, need, you first need to define what, what are the SLAs and what are the consistency guarantees. We didn't have to do that when you just use Oracle, right? It was always linearizable. On the other hand, usually, I mean, when, when it was not available, right? And, and, and then the application stops, but, stopped, but the user were perhaps fine with that. Today, that's not the case. If the, if the application fails, then, then most, most users, they will just leave. So again, what do you need? And, 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 and in a way, one positive way you look at it is the cap theorem actually gives you a lot of headroom to, to, fiddle, to fiddle around with the, with the constraints. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, it was yes, the, the history is that there was a conjecture by Eric Brewer in 2000. It was later proved by Nancy Lynch and Gilbert in 2002. And it really spun and like kicked off this whole NoSQL movement. Actually showing that, okay, we don't just have to be fully acid. There is actually sort of some, 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 some benefit of, 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 of moving more towards the availability space. And that's why I have Cassandra, all these, you know, like, and, and like, yeah, Voldemort and these other, like, more eventually consistent databases. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, don't know, I can skip that. So, yeah, I have a lot to talk about. I think I'm just going to skip sort of the war discussion of, of CAP. This is an interesting one, but you can read the slides later. Uh, one thing that I think can be worth talking about is, is, is sort of is how, we, how we think about time. That's essentially my talk tomorrow. It's going to be a lot about how we think about time, but, 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 but just some, some words on it. I think that last right wins that actually a lot of SQL, NoSQL databases uses I mean, you have some sort of glo glo global clock and you, and you assume that all your nodes, you have the same notion of time. They, have, they are all synced and they, and they have the same sort of, they're not skewed more than like, like, like within, within what the, the, the constraints you, you, you set up. It's, it's, it's usually not a sustainable strategy. It actually will, it will make you, use, you lose data. Because, because there's really no, no way of ensuring that time will always be in sync. So you will, you, you will end up with overwriting data. Then I, then I think re relying on some of the fundamental research that we, that we have, like for example, Lam Lamport clocks that Le Leslie Lamport sort of, uh, came up with in the, se in the 70s, that he t when, where he defines logical clocks, clocks that actually work in a distributed system without having global, cons like, uh, global understanding of what the time is at, at, the, at this point. Like, talk about ca causality instead. Well, one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, and I can actually figure out the order of events without relying on a shared sort of like, gl gl global clock. And that was sort of taken to, to the next level with, with, with Colin Fitch when he came up with vector clocks. And vector clocks is, is usually, like for, for example, the what, 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 what ACA cluster is based upon, what REAC is using as a, as a way to have like a fully, completely decoupled peer-to-peer -peer based system where, where, actually, where we can actually still make sense of time, essentially. Uh, but something that is also extremely important to discuss, I think, is, is failure de detection. As I said, 
there's really no way of, of knowing if a node is down or if it's just having a hard time, as I said, doing GC or, or is overloaded for other, for other, for other reasons. But we, we need to have solid, good sort of strategies for guessing, essentially. And it's, 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 it's really a hard problem to solve. It's really sort of, it's, it's somewhere in between a, like an art form and sort of black, black science, so to speak, in a way. And, uh, and uh, so, but, but sort of to understand what is, what is necessary, I think, we can, we can sort of start with the formal model for, 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 for failure de detection. First, we need, we need what is like strong completeness. Strong completeness means like that like every crash process will eventually suspect every correct process. This is like the strongest one you can get. It's, it's actually pretty hard to achieve, and it's, but it's also most often actually not needed. Uh, essentially, everyone knows, right? Weak completeness means that every crash process is eventually suspected by some correct process. Like, like if the 100 node cluster, one guy is down, then at least one other node in the cluster will, will detect that. And then he, of course, can spread, can spread the information. That's like someone knows. Strong accuracy means that no correct process is suspected ever, meaning that there's no false positives. It's also a very strong guarantee. Weak accuracy is that some correct process is never suspected. Then there can be some false positives. So I mean, the, ideally, we will have strong completeness and strong accuracy, but everything has a cost. So, 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 so that also brings us back to like, when do we need like what is called linearizability in, in, in CAP? When do we need ACID? Like you have like in the notion of Oracle, like or, like, or, or, or repeated read or any, or any of these like ACID semantics. And when can we get by with a weaker, with weaker guarantees that still do, does the job? Everything is about trade-offs, especially in, in distributed systems. And uh, one, one failure detector that, that we are using in, in ACA is, is, what we call, is what is called the accrual failure de de detector. And that, that's sort of an interesting one. I'm just, I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the interesting failure detectors out there. There are, of course, hundreds of different algorithms, but there are a couple of ones. This is actually something I, I, when, when I implemented it a long time ago, I, st I, I stole the idea from, from Cassandra that used this failure detector. So there's, there's more than Akka's using it now. And the, the interesting thing about this is that it sort of keeps the history of the heartbeat statistics. First, it works with, with heartbeat, of course. Like, it, like heartbeats sent, like sent around the, the cluster in, in sort of random, like semi-random fashion, at least. And it keeps the history of, 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 these, of, the, of the statistics from this, from, from this, this heartbeat. And, and, this, and it also sort of decouples the monitoring of this from the, int from the inter interpretation of, of the value. So, so it, it introduces what is called the phi, the phi value. And the phi value is not just yes or no. The node is down, yes, one, or it's, it's like it's up, essentially. But it gives you the likelihood that the node is down. So how likely is it, right? And this gives us, as users of this failure detector, some more headroom to actually take educated guesses first, and, and, and also gives us like, some, some, some headroom also to, 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 to work with. For example, a really, really, crit like, really critical task we might actually send to someone with a with lower likelihood that it's being down, while things that don't matter that much we send to, to nodes that have a higher likelihood of being, of being down. And of course, above a, a certain threshold, we would just say flat out, he's probably dead, so we should contact him and we should like, disconnect him from the cluster. Uh, and, 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 sort of, and sort of the whole idea between, be, behind this is that sort of it can take, it's, it gives, in the ideal world at least, more intelligence, and it can take like network hip, hiccups into, into, into account, and when you, when you plot it out, it usually looks something like, like this, and actually that's a math as well. If, re, if you're interested. We, you, we, we use this, this in ACA, but unless I, unless I can, I, I, I I have time for it. I can just I can just re tell you right now that even if we even even though we use this and this this like fancy math and everything, it's actually when you, when you run on the JVM, it's actually not that helpful. But it, because it turn, it turns out that there's there's I mean when, when, with GC pauses and, and and everything, there are usually too many false positives. 
So we, so we had to introduce one variable where like I should actually shift the whole graph by having like a static fixed value that you, that you have in the configuration. That's still the case, Conrad, right? Yeah, so, so, so actually sort of almost taking this whole nice math and this accrual history and this intelligence in, like out of, it's uh, actually disabling that, which is, which, is, which is sort of sad, you can say, but that's, that's, that's a fact of life. And I think it tells an interesting story that like sort of theoretical science is not always applied science, right? So the, the, the swim failure detector is another, it's, 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 it's from a paper called SWIM uh, by Cornell in the 2002, I think it was. And, and, and th that also has a very interesting model for, for, for failure de detection. It also sort of separates a sort of cluster de 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 dissemination from the heartbeats. And it has this, sort of this quarantine of, of suspected nodes where actually nodes can like be, be put there, but also be, be taken out of this quarantine. And, and the way, the way, it, the way it, it, it works is that if, if a node, let's say like a node Alice tries to like ping Bob, for example, and, and, and that ping times out, then, he, then, she, then Alice just, doesn't just put Bob into this quarantine or like mark him as down, but instead she, Alice can send, can send a, a notification to, to Bill, for example, with the hint, say, can you go and check on Bob for me? Because there might be that there's a network split just between Alice and Bob, but there is a way around that network split, and this thing might heal eventually, or it might not heal, but there's still a way around that. And, and, then, and, then, and then sort of, Bill might, might come back and, and tell Alice, no, Bob's down. And then she can try with yet another one, or she, after, after a certain number of tries, with other routes, she can mark him as down. But, but one, one of them might actually come back and say, no, Bob is actually up. He's, he's, he's fine. There was just an, like a network split between us, right? So, so, this, so this, this gives you also like more, more, more intelligence and, 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 and a lot more more like highly likelihood to actually take the right sort of uh, guesses essentially. That's what that's all about. Uh, strong consistency is also, is also interesting. I, 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 usually, I, I usually say this, I think, I, honestly, I think strong consistency, even though it has been the default, it's like it's, it's a terrible default. You should never start with strong consistency, even though we're so inclined to do that because we've been, like destroyed by the, all these like SQL databases and ACID and all these things in school. Strong consistency is actually some, like the last thing that you should end up for a minimal set data set in your application. You might end up there. I'm not saying that there, there, there are, there might be the sort of parts of your data that needs strong consistency. There needs to be ACID if, if, if you use like the, this, this, the SQL database terms. But that's usually a surprisingly small set. And, it's, and, 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 and by starting with some with, with, with like less strict and, and, and sort of expensive guarantees, because that's really what it's all about. Everything, all the guarantees you add are really expensive. And move your way towards strong consistency, then you can guarantee that you just pay for what you absolutely need. And it's a lot harder to start with strong consistency and then try to loosen it up. So, that, that, so that's the way I'm, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at it. Uh, but, but that said, there, there's a lot of interesting research, right? You, I mean, you see, uh, like taking a step back, you saw like XA transaction, distributed transaction was on my graveyard of distributed systems, right? So I actually, I actually, I was, I was personally, I was, I was, I was done with them. I, was, I swore I would never ever tr attempt something like that again, right? But uh, then, then a few years ago, there started to be some, some quite interesting re research in distributed transactions, particularly by Peter, by Peter Bayliss and his, and his group of, of, of research, brilliant researcher in, in Berkeley Labs, where, where they actually they looked at it from another perspective. I mean, in the sense that if I, what was or what classic transaction guarantees that we have out there can, can be made available without, I mean, can, can actually you have this like, consistency, you know, without sacrificing avail av availability. So there was this, this paper, Highly Available Transaction, that came out in 2013. He actually calls this sort of, fan, sort of cleverly hacked, it's not cap, right? Highly Available Transactions. 
uh, of course I needed to have a hat there. So, but the executive summary is really that sort of most SQL databases out there actually do not support, actually support serializability. I don't know if you, if you, if, if you know what serializability, that's sort of the, the, the sort of the holy grail, right? What everyone wants in, 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 in relation to databases. That's what, that's what we're talking about. That's essentially the highest, for, like, high, the highest level of ACID. That's serializability. But most, most, most databases actually don't, don't have that. Oracle, for example, doesn't have that. Oracle 11G doesn't have serializability. They actually have weaker guarantees for performance reasons. So, so the question is that which one of these can, can we actually implement with a with HA in any any I mean highly, in a highly available fashion? It turns out there's 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 quite a lot actually. Uh, the ones that are unavailable is serializable, for example, and snapshot isolation, repeatable read, but but all of these at the at the at the bottom list like read committed, read read uncommitted, read your writes. I mean, a lot of these things that actually gives you intuitive semantics, uh, recommitted, read your rights, the, 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 this gives you this causality that, actually, that most people expect, but nothing more. They can actually be made available, totally available. So in a way, that gives us tools to actually bring transactions, distributed transactions, back into the picture. They still have a high cost. So you shouldn't just like, start like, splintering them out everywhere. But it's interesting, there's yet another tool in the toolbox that we can use. Uh, yeah. Consensus protocols. I think you, you, you can talk a little bit about that, I think. Or actually, actually I think I'm going to skip that. I'm boring you guys. Uh, just, I mean, some, some, sometimes, you know, you, want, you don't want to use a database, but sometimes you need some, some sort of coordination mechanism that is consistent, but doesn't necessarily have to be available. And, and, and uh, sort of the canonical algorithm to achieve that is Paxos. That was sort of invented by Leslie Lamport in 1889. And I'm, and I'm sure you've, you've heard about it, if you, if you, took, if you like taking computer science courses on, dis on distributed systems, at least. The interesting thing is that even though that's like what almost everyone used all through the like 90s and 2000, he was actually not the, fir the, not, not, not the first one. Uh, Barbara Liskov, together with this, I don't know what's his name actually, Oki, came up with what's called view stamp replication just the year before. And, and, and looking at it in retrospect, it was sort of un unfortunate, I think, that the Paxos took off like crazy. It's a very fun paper, actually, the part-time parliament, where it talks about, you know, this, this island, and they have, they have our agreement or disagreements in the parliament. So it's, it's a fun paper to read, and, but most people actually didn't understand it and see, see the point. But for some reason, anyway, it really took off, while view stamp replication didn't. But looking at it in retrospect now, I think view, view, like view stamp replication by Liskov is actually a simpler model to understand. It's actually simpler to implement in the correct way, while Paxos is so much ad hoc that everyone actually usually ends up with a completely unproven informal, informal sort of implementation of, 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 of the, that is unproven, essentially. So everyone ends up with something that's not proven and they have to like go through all kind of testing or use like other tools, TLA plus or whatever, to verify their own implementation, which is just weird, right? And th this is why it was, there was a need for improving the state, the state of the art. And, that's, that is, and the, sort of the first real attempt of that that was successful was Zookeeper. Zookeeper actually said, we're not gonna implement Paxos, we're gonna, how many have heard about Zookeeper, by the way? I think, mo yeah, most people. They invented their own pro protocols called ZAB, Z Z Zookeeper Atomic Broadcast Protocol. And they, they were cheating a bit, right? They said, okay, we're just gonna support TCP, meaning ordering is guaranteed then uh, from one, for one reader. Same as we do with ACK, actually. That's how we can have the one actor, we guarantee the ordering from writing to, to like from one actor to, to another because TCP do, does that for us, at a, at a, at a cost, of course. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting uh, uh, variation of it. And, and, and another also very interesting variation of it is Raft. 
Conrad, I can talk, can give you a whole talk about that. He, he wrote an, an implementation of that for Raqqa called Raqqa Raft. But it's like there are hundreds of, let me say hundreds, I shouldn't exaggerate, at least tens, like 20, 30 different implementations of Raft now. And Raft was actually interesting because they said, like, all these things are just too hard. Now we're going, now we're going for educational purposes, probably coming from like the need to explain these things in school. Said, okay, how can we design a, a, like an, a, an algorithm that people can actually understand? And what they ended up with was actually, through a lot of simplifications, and be in the clean design, something that actually works very well in production and in the real world as well. So that's, that's why I think that's, that should be what, what, what people reach for most of the time. Uh, yeah, event logging, I don't know. So eventual consistency, I think, is also, I've, I've sort of hinted at that. And eventual consistency is something sort of that came out of the need to, 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 to explore sort of the, the sort of unknown terror, like landscape that came out of the cap theorem, essentially. I mean, eventual consistency has, of course, been around forever, right? And that's what we do now. I and mean, when we talk to each other, I mean, we don't have like this the simultaneous understanding of what I'm saying. It takes a while to, for, you to, for me to send the information to you and it's for you to, to, to process it and, and so on. That's all. So there's nothing new about it, but, but as a term, as the, like the industry adopted, it sort of came out of, 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 the, of, the, of the CAF theorem, you could say. Uh, and and, uh, and sort of one of, the, one of the sort of canonical papers, right, that sort of, I think most people, actually everyone, I think the slightest interest in distributed systems should read because it has so much information and so much state of the art today. It's, it's, the, it's the Dynamo paper that came out of Amazon explaining essentially how they do EC2 or like the, sort of the back end systems for that, for, the, for EC2. And, and uh, uh, that's sort of what sort of kicked off this NoSQL. First, they came out like, like tons of Dynamo clones. Uh, like Voldemort and React was initially that, and, and yeah, Dynamite, and I don't can't remember all of them. Like the one coming up every week, it felt like for a while. But, but, and then and in, the, in the footsteps of that, you had like Cassandra, for example, that's sort of merged the Dynamo model with Big Table, Google's Big Table model, to get a very interesting database, and that's. So there, 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 like there are a few now that like stand have st like stood the test of time, but. Dynamo is really the sort of the paper and the sort of the implementation now through Dynamo DB that sort of kicked it all off, I think. And, and it, it popularized uh, a whole bunch of things. That's why I think it's an interesting paper to, to start reading if you're interested. It's very easy to read. It's sort of very dense, so it takes a few passes, I guess, to understand it. But it, in, it introduced things like, like eventual consistency, as I said, but also things like epidemic gossiping. They, of course, they were not the first. I think the first paper I read about that, like this, this node ring and the peer-to-peer -peer model was cord. I think we'll talk about that later. But it sort of popularized it and put it in, in an interesting context. Consistent hashing is another thing that we now almost take for granted. That was also, they, they also talk about in this paper, hinted handoff and read repair and some of the other techniques as well. So, 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 so th that, that sort of brings me to, to like epidemic gossiping. And this is, that's a, if I have time, actually I probably won't have much time, but this is, this is also how we do, how we do things in, in ACA. ACA cluster is all based on a completely peer-to-peer -peer based model using epidemic gossiping. And, and it's, it's really called epidemic gossiping because it's it like, it spreads information in this cluster very similar to like, a high, high, like how a virus would spread in a biologic, in a biological sort of community or in a biological envir environment. So the, so the way it, it, it works is that you have, you have, you have, like, you have a lot of nodes, you lay them out as, as a node ring where, where, where everyone is connected to everyone. Uh, it's actually, it's not just like that, I should probably change that, but it's everyone usually knows about everyone. And, and so then it's, and then it's like starts gossiping, like usually randomly. There are of course op optimizations, but in the simplest model, the, like everyone gossips like randomly to everyone, uh, and 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 like actually to like check, like either as a heartbeat, right, are you up or not, but also to to, to like spread information. Who's part of the node ring? Who's 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 marked as down by the failure detector? 
and who's, who's back from quarantine, whatever it is, right? This is how you spread information. And, and the interesting thing is that the benefits of, of this very sort of decoupled, loosely coupled design is that you have no, no like single point of, of failure. If one node goes down, it's fine. I mean, it's, everything just, just recovers. Uh, and then you can easily start adding more nodes in the node ring without like doing a lot of administration, taking down nodes or updating the central place for configuration, like Zookeeper or whatever. It's also, it's also like a single point, no single point of bottleneck, but it's also very, very scalable and extremely elastic. Like you can just grow and shrink as much as, as, much as, you, as you want. And, and usually time is managed here using vector clocks. It doesn't have to. But, but that's usually the way, it's, the way it's related. So every time you receive an event, you, you add, you add your, your logical time. Basically, it's essentially, in the simplest term, just incrementing a counter. I received like value one here. I, that was the first event. I'm saying, okay, and now I'm on, on time two. I'm putting the, the two in the message. I'm sending that out to this guy. He says, oh, he's, he's like time is two now. I'm incrementing it to three. And, and, and then everyone sort of knows have sort of a notion of time that works across the cluster. Vector clocks work a little bit different. That was for the Lamport clocks, but you get the idea. And they also sort of introduced by Korn. Fairly recent research in the early 2000s. So that's it's really when this whole thing sort of, sort of kicked off. And like, you know, almost every database like in this NoSQL space is implemented similar to this. So this was like a fast walkthrough. I'm all exhausted now. Uh, about the, the state of the art of distributed systems. I, 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 I skipped a lot because I wanted to have a few minutes on, on, on how we sort of take all this now and, and put it in the context of ACA. I'm actually on time. Uh, I started, on the other hand, 10 minutes late. I don't know what you guys want to do. Should I? So this is actually a nice ending here now. But on the other hand, I could continue for a little while, for, for five, 10 minutes. Okay. I'll do that then. So, oops. So, 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 when it comes to ACA, I don't know if you've heard about ACA. If, if you have, if you, if you don't know what ACA, tough luck because I'm not going to tell you much about what it is actually. More than it's, it's, it's an, it's an implementation. The, the short sort of s s summary is an implementation of the actor model on the JVM. It exposes Java and Scala APIs. It's implemented in Scala, but uh, and it's sort of it's it's a great model for working with concurrency distribution. As I said, the, in the in our world they are the same, and you work with this fully, very uh, sort of um, these like isolated units. They're very resilient because fa fa like failure is contained, and there is an, ad an additional failure model that we have like stolen. Shamelessly, I actually asked Joe for permission. No, I didn't, but I asked him for forgiveness. Joe Armstrong, the guy, the guy that invented Erlang afterwards, but he's actually happy about it. But anyway, that we, we, we took their model and, and slapped it on top of the actor model to, to give you a great model for, for resilience. And uh, if you haven't heard about Akka, you should ask Conrad. He's on the Akka team to come up and give you a talk about that. But what, 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 but what I wanted to talk about now is actually how we take this actor model and we layer interesting abstractions on top of it, borrowing from all the techniques and, and, and knowledge that I've just talked about from the history of distributed computing. So we have the actors at the bottom here. <clears throat> what we, the, the second layer is Akka IO. That gives you like a, ni a nice IO abstraction to work with like TCP, UDP, and stuff like that. <clears throat> On that, we have layered Akka Remote, which gives you a fairly low level way of, of, give, of giving loca getting location transparency. You can like spin up actors somewhere else in the cluster. You, can, you get a handle to them, and you start communicating with this handle, uh, and you don't really need to know where the actor resides. But, but it's, it's, it's a little bit low level because you usually define where, where it resides, either to the configuration file or hard coded. Usually in the configuration file, you say this actually should be like a, sort of a mobile, but in the configuration file, you define your topology and say, okay, this, this subsystem goes here, and this goes here, and this goes here. And this is a lot of power to that, but, but it's also more static than we want. So that's why we layer the ACA cluster on top of that, making use of, of, of both like first IO and then remote. 
and give you the elasticity that you need. It actually, I was going to talk about that later, so I won't give, like, spoil you all the fun. But it essentially sort of gives you the elasticity in having actors being completely decoupled from their location so, 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 and handed over to the cluster. So the cluster can actually spin up actors somewhere else, completely independent of, of, how, of, of how it was initially spawned up. And if a whole no goes down, the cluster can say, I can move over all these actors, spin them all up here, actually replay their, 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 their history that led up to their state, so they can continue, continue just function as nothing happened. Sounds like magic. It is, actually. You should take a look at it, aka.io. But um, let me get, this, get through this first. <laughs> so what is aka cluster all about then? Yeah, it gives you cluster membership. As I said, I mean, who, who's, who's part of the cluster, who's, who, and who's joining, and who is leaving, and, 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 and so on. And you can actually hook, hook into an SPI getting callbacks, or APIs more of, like an API that you can get callbacks, notifications when nodes come and go, which can be very, very useful. It also has the notion of a leader, and a notion, and, and uh, so, so you know that some service we just run once in the cluster. We have, we have that internally in that cluster, but it also expose it to you through what we call the singleton, that you can say, I want this service to run once at one point, uh, sorry, sorry, one place in the cluster and be sure that it doesn't run anywhere else. I mean, yeah, it's a stupid example, but if you, let's say you have, you want to, you, you want to like send out a bunch of marketing emails to your clients, for example. I mean, you have, you have 100 node cluster, it would be stupid to run that service on every single machine, right? I think the customers would be very happy about that, right? You want to you want that to walk through a single service that just does it once for every client. But there are, of course, better examples than that, but someone most people can understand. Cluster sharding is another in interesting pattern we have. Cluster routers and so on. But you see, all of these is actually things that we have layered on top as patterns for you to use. These patterns compose very, very well, and it gives you a lot of high, higher abstractions to work with. Uh, like yeah, cluster pub sub, for example, and so on. So, but, but, but first, how does cluster membership then work in, in ACA? Uh, so yeah, so it, it borrows a lot from, from Dynamo and, and, and from a lot of a lot of implementations of, 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 of the Dynamo paper. React, for example, we're, we're good friends with them, and we also, we're, we're usually we have we're borrowed from a lot of nice nice implementations. But it, but that gives us sort of a fully peer-to-peer -peer based system, completely decentralized, no no master. We have the notion of leader. I'll come back to that. It does seems like. That sort of um, goes like um, uh, sort of it's like it goes against sort of having a fully masterless system. Why would you need a leader? But I'll, I'll come back to that. So essentially, it is like fully masterless. It means that any node can be anything at any point in time. Nodes can come and go and so on, and nobody really cares. It's using a, 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 epidemic gossiping, this node ring. It's using vector clocks for causal consistency, as they're keeping track of time and. It's, it's really, it, it, this gives us a model that's very scalable, half, sort of n half non-optimized, actually, uh, ACA cluster is, and we still were able to reach like 2,400 nodes, spin up 2,400 nodes on, on Google Compute, Compute Engine. The reason why I say it's sort of half optimized is that we, we started optimizing until we got to about 2,400, and then we have a lot of other optimizations we could do, but we said 2,400 is like way beyond our current users, so there's no need we should focus on other things. But I think actually there's more headroom to do that, and that's not necessarily just because this is a great implementation, partly I think, but it's essentially to using the right tools for the job. This type of, of, of fully like masterless decentralized peer-to-peer -peer node ring gives you a lot of freedom to scale because there's no coordination points. You know, contention is the biggest scalability killer. As soon as there need to be sync points, then you have wait time because this one guy can update something and then another one waiting, everyone can read then and then when someone comes in and write. So if you remove all coordination, then you can scale it and theoretically like linearly. Uh, it also has, uh, gives you a great throughput in this. We were actually able to spin up 1,000 nodes, including the, the, actually the, the Google Compute Engine instances in four minutes. So 
So in four minutes, we actually kicked off all of these 1,000 nodes, with the, including the, actually the images, and have a fully connected working cluster ready in four minutes, which is actually pretty mind-blowing. I, I didn't believe the numbers when Patrick sent them to me. But he was right, and I was happy. Uh, so, how do, how, so how does gossiping work then? Th this is sort of a simplified version of the gossip state. It's actually probably sad to say, but this is probably the only code you will see in this presentation. Uh, so if you're eager for code, I hope the, 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 uh, the following presenters will show more of that. But this is a case class, at least. You know, Scott, uh, everyone should know that. And, and it has, sir, the, it has first, first I can say it's a, C, it's a CRDT. I haven't really talked about CRDTs yet, because that's something I skipped. But CRDTs is a very interesting new type of research. It gives you, it's what, what it's called, it means conflict-free replicated data types. It gives you rich data types that will eventually converge into the right thing without you having to worry about any co co coordination. So it removes this need for having coordination, but still gives you more than registers. You know, key value stores are just registers. They can be rich data, data types, like they can be graphs and maps and sets and these type of things that have the nice properties that if you just throw them out there, they will center around, not be updated like crazy. Eventually they will converge and everyone will agree on the result. Uh, so, and, and, and this gossip state is, is a CRDT. Uh, so it will, we, we can guarantee that it will always converge to the same result and everyone in the node ring will see that. Th that said, so what is it made out of then? First we have the members sort of set. This is a sorted set, because, sorted because we want them I mean, to lay them out in a, no, in a node ring, or so, sorted by, um, yeah, sort of, we have, a, we have, what is it sorted by? Is it like, is it like, is IP address port is it still or? The full address, yeah, the, the full address. Uh, and then we have the scene table, and that is what we use for, for what something we call cluster con, 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 convergence. That's a very important topic in, in the implementation. I'll get, I'll get back to that. Then we have this unreachable set, sort of marking, uh, I mean, all the nodes that, that are marked as, as, as potentially down are put there. And then we, we have our notion of time. We version every single one, so we know sort of who's before what. I mean, so we have sort of a causally related ordering between all these. Uh, so we can see history like uh, is progressing, essentially. It's very important as well. So the gossiping just works. Like it takes this, this, this sort of data set and just picks a random node with like older and newer version. It's not, it's not important to send, those, send it to the one that has like the same versions, but older and newer. Uh, and, and then it just sends it off in a, in a conversational fashion. So it, on, in a request reply sort of fashion. And, and once, once you get it, if, it's, if, if what you, essentially the, 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 the simple version of it is essentially when, when you see, if, if the state you have is newer, then you update your, 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 your state, you increment the value, and, you, and, and, you, and you're essentially done. If, it's, if the state is older, then you know that, that, that the node the sent is, is out of date, you have the newer version, then you don't update your state with his stuff, right? But the, instead of, of you, you, you use the gossip state to send that over to him, so he can update his state with the newest one. But you always, think for each, each one, you always like increment the, the the, 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 the version to make sure that the time is constantly progressing. There, there's more to say about it, but I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. Cluster convergence is also very important. That sort of ensures that when there's cluster convergence, everyone in the cluster knows that everyone has seen the same thing. Then, everyone, then we have a stable state in the cluster. Uh, and, and cluster convergence is that when all nodes are in the scene set, so everyone has seen the same value uh, with, with the same vector clocks, and, and no members are in, in the unreachable ones, or if they are in the reachable ones, they are either set to down or, or set to exiting. If they're set to exiting, that means that they're actually leaving, so we shouldn't bother. If they're set to down, that means that they, they can never come back, so that it's also safe to ignore them. But if they are in the reachable but not down or exiting, 
then we don't really know what's up with that guy. And we can't have cluster convergence because there's something, yeah, something up in the air there. Right? Bias gossip, yeah, that's something, yeah, it's just an optimization. Push pull gossip is also some, like, I don't know if that's, that's, that's super interesting. It might be, actually. Well, so we have sort of a vari variation of push pull gossip where, we, where if we, if we know that, 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 that we have the same, if we get a heart, sort of, if we get, get, get information from one node and we know and we have the same vector clock, then, then we just send the, the status with the vector clock. We, we sort of st strip out all the, these, these extra information. Because as the cluster grows, it can, be, it can actually be, you know, the, the state of the cluster um, sort of gossip messages that we send around that can actually grow quite a lot. We have strategies to actually minimize that with like gzipping and stuff, but, but still. Uh, and, and, and we, so the default in a stable cluster is actually just that we send the status message around. But as soon as, as one of the nodes detect, okay, we have different vector clocks, it means that someone has done something somewhere that have like incremented the vector clock, meaning that an event have happened, then we know that we don't have convergence and we start gossiping again until we get stable convergence and we can go back to this. That's, that's, that's different. I mean, you, 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 usually the default is, I think, one, one second. What, 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 once every second. But uh, I, I, I think that, 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 that we have this, if more than, if less than half of the nodes are in the scene set, at least if I remember correctly, then we start gossiping more frequently to make sure that the, color, the, the whole thing converges qu more quickly. But, but, but when we reach beyond the half, we go, we, then we go down again. Is, uh, yeah, I think that's that's correct. So so and, and 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 we have we have other things as well, right? When it comes to optimizations in the in the gossip, for example, uh, um, having having techniques to not like to totally overwhelm laggers, for example, or new nodes coming in. If everyone like start like gossiping to that like crazy, you might you might overload him just because everyone wants to be so helpful, right, and get him up to speed. So, so, so then you, you need to start taking these things into account when you have like hundreds of nodes. So you, else you can be, you can easily overload parts of the cluster because everyone wants to, you know, be helpful, so to speak. So I don't know if that, if that was helpful. What worries me is a little bit because uh, I don't know if I'm right, but I see like a square from complexity in this. If you have like a multiple... Good point, yeah. Yeah, and, but everyone is not gossiping to everyone. That is your, that's what you're after, right? So at some point of uh, time, you can saturate the network just by uh, gossip from everyone yeah. to everyone. Yeah, I'm, 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 I think I'm going to come to that in a while. But, but I can just, I think I'm going to come to that, actually, how we work that. And not everyone's not gossiping to everyone, of course. But, but, but the, you pick a limited number of your buddies and then you gossip to them, like, and, and, and so on. But, but, but let's first just talk about the leader, the leader role. The leader role is, is really, there's no leader election or anything like that. We, we just, we, should, we sort of cheat in a way. You, you know, we have the, we have the node ring and, and, the, and so we just essentially take, we, we take it and lay, and lay it out. So we have one first guy and then in the sorted set and then, and then all the following ones. We just say that the, the, that the first guy in the sorted set is always the leader. So, so it's de deterministically known by all nodes in the cluster. As, as soon as there's convergence, we know, the, we know that there's agreement because the algorithm for sorting is deterministic. We know that everyone knows that we have the leader and who's, who's the leader. And the leader's only duties is, is extremely sort of low, low in, like processing intensive, really. It, it, is, it is actually to, to, to move, to move members from joining to up. Uh, I think I have the diagram later on with like this, this state chart, but when, it, when a new jo node joins, it joins as, as, as in the state joining. And, and, and it's actually the leader that says, that acknowledges, okay, you want to join, I'm gonna take you from joining to up. And then it's like a fully member, full member of the cluster. It's also the one that is moving um, so exiting members to, re to remove, like members are flagged that I want to exit. The leader makes sure that everyone understands that 
and, it, and, and once you have convergence on that, it moves, that, it moves him to, to, re, to removed. It also does something called auto-down, which, which sort of can be debatable if it's, if it's, if it's a good thing, you know, you're, 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 or not. It's, it's sort of convenient sometimes, but it can also get in the way. And that is, uh, at least in, in the simplest form of this algorithm, and, and, and you, you, you remember that we have this unreachable set of nodes. So, so uh, auto down means that, that the leader can actually just take one, take the ones in, in unreachable and put them to down, mark them as down. And, the, and, and you remember there can't be convergence unless, unless that either the, the unreachable set is empty or all of them is marked as down. So the leader can actually self decide to make progress uh, automatically. And that sounds like a nice thing, but the, the algorithms we've had there have been way too sim simplistic, essentially. So it like caused all kinds of problems. The leader taking stupid decisions, right? And like downing half of the, like the wrong half of the cluster and, 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 and whatever can happen. Um, so, so we've said early, we said, you should have that disabled and you should have an administrator, a human coming in and say, this notice should be marked as down because I know that he's, faulty or he should be down for maintenance or he's or that he should not be down because it's the other side of, of the of the network split that should be down because this these nodes on this side actually perform more important functions than these and so on you can yeah, you can take it any way you want but what we're adding now and what the ACA team have worked on the, in uh, the last month is that it's more advanced algorithms for 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 downing essentially more intelligence and, and, and more knobs to turn actually in, in order to make intelligent, auto, intelligent auto, automatic choices or decisions on this. So it's, it's essentially to deal with the, with the split brain problem. Okay. Failure detection, I, yeah, I think I've already talked main, mainly about, and also we use a cruel failure detector, really, that it's, it doesn't really work that well in practice. So, oops, I can just show you the slide, the, the graphs here. That in, in, the, in the ideal world, it should be like the left-hand side slide here. But it's usually something like the right-hand side in, in practice. I don't know if you can see that, but we have the third uh, sort of variable there, or like this is called acceptable heartbeat pause. That's sort of the fixed value that you normally actually have to add in order to not get so many false positives. To deal with things like, la like network latencies, garbage collection, and so on. So that was a disappointment, but still, as I said, you learn as you go. Something that I would like to implement, though, is the swim failure de detector. But there's just too many hours in the day, right? So uh, failure detector is something I think we could, we could, we could, we could do better in ARC in general. Network partitions, yeah, and how the fa failure works. And a failure de detector is it, is it actually is the guy that then takes a node and marks it as unavailable, puts it in the unreachable set in the gossip state, essentially. So, and as you know, if, 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 if one node, one single node is unreachable, they, they, then there can't be cluster convergence, meaning that the leader can't perform his duties, he can't add nodes, he can't have nodes leave, so on. The thing stops, for a good reason, because then you have what is called a split, a split brain problem. And this is like one of the classic problems. When like half, you, like you have network split, splitting the whole thing, in, the whole cluster in, in half, where there's no communication going on between. There, there is usually, this is also sort of the crucial thing in, in the cap theorem. Here, this decision, what do you do then? One option is actually say, okay, I'm going to favor availability. So I'm going to let clients connect to each one of these separated clusters and just go on with it. Right? But then you sacrifice consistency, because this cluster had no idea what's happening here, and you have problems of merging them when the network comes back. So, this, so here is where you favor A and P in CAP. But, but, but the, uh, the other is, is, is actually to say, consistency is more important, so I'm, just, I'm not going to allow that. I'm just going to let one of these subclusters uh, in, on the sp each side of the, sp you know, the split brain, one of them to continue, and the other one I'm going to like, shut down. So then you sacrifice availability, but you make sure the consistency is kept. And, and this is the, essentially the same problem we, hear here, we have here. You can't communicate between these two, so you need to do something about that. 
And, and, in, and, and in, in, in ACA we have this downing feature. So say there is auto down or, or, you, or a system administrator can do it. So it can be manual down. Uh, there's a lot of optimizations we can do, as I said. Uh, yeah, I think I've talked most about this as well. So what's happening beyond? What are we working on right, right now? Uh, yeah, we, just around the corner we have ACA HTTP, which is, I don't know if you heard about Spray. We, you know, we, 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 we took Spray in under, sorry, under the ACA brand or ACA umbrella, and we have optimized, like, like improved it, I'd say. We added web sockets and we added a lot of other interesting things, and we have, um, we have a Java API, for example, that is pretty slick, and there's a whole, whole, whole bunch of stuff, and we based it on top of ACA Streams, that is a streaming library, it's brilliantly done, with this super slick DSL. Uh, and and uh, sits so Aka HTTP just sits right on top of Aka Streams, uh, so that's going to be released in in I think I have some notes here. Yeah, in Aka 2.4 that's coming out just in a few months. Uh, I think we're aiming for you know, for starting of the RC by the end of June, so it's only about a month out. And then I mean, please test it and bang on it and see what's happening and then we can hopefully ship the final very soon after that. Another very interesting module is what we have think finally d decided like the consensus on, on the name. I think it's going to be called ACA Distributed Data. Yeah. And that is actually that, that is the, a, a great module that, that Patrick did in the ACA team uh, implementing CRDTs, conflict-free replicated data types including sort of an, an, an engine, you can say, or like a, like a transport or fa little fabrics or like to, to, to replicate that in, in a nice fashion. And it, we, we, we use it ourselves to implement our latest product conductor to have a fully, for the co fully coordination free uh, consensus model. Uh, so that's also something to, to check out, also coming in ACA 2.4. And something that we're talking about now is, is, is ACA services to, to, like to, to, to essentially bring all of these nice patterns like cluster sharding, pub sub, streams, bring, like bring it together into single unified abstraction uh, that makes it easier to use. You're probably less powerful, but if you need power, you step down the ladder. Uh, with uh, with low, more 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 low level, but 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 having very nice, very high level abstraction to 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 build really reliable distributed systems. Uh, so that's something I'm really excited about. But we don't know when that's going to come. I was probably going to something we're going to work on in the fall. So if you want to if you want to learn more, go to aka.io. That's the website. We have tons of information, hundreds hundreds of pages of docs. But there's also some, some pretty nice uh, getting started guys. If you go, if you just Google type save activator, there, there, there's, um, we have a few hundred different templates. Many of them are ACA. Shows you how to do like ACA cluster stuff and pub sub and distributed pub sub and ACA persistence, all type of stuff, ACA HTTP. And, and uh, it's a nice way of getting started with it. It gives you like a full-blown environment. With, you have tutorial on one side, you have a code editor, you can fool around, you, have, you can run your code, change it, you can continue the tutorial. It's a nice thing to like, fool around with and learn. So that's, I think, the best way to get started with all of this. So that was it, I think. If you wanna, if you wanna know more, I have a bunch of stuff to read here. These are all the, all the, all the all the papers that I've based this talk on. So yeah, it's a gold mine of stuff if you're interested in these type of things. So I'm, I'm over, I think I'm over time now, but, but uh, I can take some questions or we take them afterwards in the bar or something, I don't know.